Okay, and uh, I want to remind everyone once again uh, that uh, when when you're speaking, when uh, we ask you to uh, say anything or uh, whatever, to please turn your camera on so everyone can see who is who is speaking. All right, so let's. Uh, Let's get on with uh, our meeting tonight, and we'll uh, briefly go over the agenda here real quick. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to first talk, as we normally do, with our about our vision statement and our mission statement. Uh, got some changes to talk to you about in the mission statement. Um, then we're going to uh, uh, take a uh, little uh, brief uh, break and introduce you to our past state regional director, Rodney Huckleberry, and Rodney's going to be on the call tonight, and we're going to uh, have Rodney uh, introduce himself to everyone, give us a little brief background, and uh, so you know that uh, what Rodney does, uh, and I'll tell you right now, Rodney is a great help to us, so uh, I want you all, if you don't already know him, uh, you all should recognize his name, and uh, and uh, perhaps at some point in time you'll have an opportunity to talk to him about something. So Rodney is a great support to us. All right, then we'll get into the various grassroots topics that we normally address. Um, we'll talk about new leaders that have come in to um, our state uh, convention of states group in the month of May, and uh, we'll touch on the training program, uh, although Rachel has been on vacation, it seems forever, um, but uh, actually it's only been a week, <laughs> but uh, so <clears throat> not much to report, uh, she's just coming back and uh, hasn't gotten caught up yet, so uh, uh, we won't have much much to cover there tonight. Um, but we'll, then we'll get into our various tracking updates and uh, <clears throat> our legislative update. We've got uh, some announcements to make uh, regarding uh, our uh, some of our legislative activities. And then in our uh, comms team, we're, uh, we've got a little short video to show you tonight. So I hope you find, uh, hope you find it uh, uh, exciting to, to see. And then, of course, we'll uh, get into our closing. So let's get started. And um, first thing we want to, of course, is uh, go over our vision statement and that our vision is to build a Hoosier grassroots community of citizens and legislators dedicated to the constitutional concept of self-governance. Remember that term, self-governance, because we're going to be talking about that a little bit more tonight, and you're going to hear more, much more about it as time goes on. Okay, mission statement. <clears throat> First goal in our mission statement, these are items that we want, goals that we want to achieve by uh, December 31st of this year. First one is still the same, and that is to... Um, Fill all the support positions, uh, region captain positions, and 70% of the district captain positions. So uh, that, that goal has not changed. Our next goal, which is the legislative goal, this has changed. Um, we're changing this to read each district captain meet at least once with each legislator presenting to them the 34 ready strategy. Now this is uh, this is obviously this is a program 34 ready. You've heard us talk about it. We've covered it. Uh, it's part of your training. Uh, Paul Phillips has put this together. So uh, we're changing this goal to be each district captain meeting at least once with each legislator between now and the end of the year and present presenting the 34 ready strategy. 
Next goal of grassroots growth to 30,000, that hasn't changed. We're sticking with that. Um, <clears throat> but we got to talk about that tonight because some other things are changing. And the last goal, if you remember previously, this goal was all directed toward education. Well, we're expanding this goal to be activities of self-governance in each district. And like I said, we're going to talk some more about that tonight. So uh, uh, education's uh, certainly part of this, but we're going to try and promote expanding activities of self-governance in each district. So those that's the mission statement. Now, I want to talk a bit about self-governance. Self-governance, as you, as you probably know, Convention of States is a part of Citizens for Self-Governance. And Citizens for Self-Governance is dedicated to the mission of recruiting, educating, training, equipping, equipping, and motivating a nationwide network of self-governing citizen activists committed to bringing government back to the people. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be focusing uh, with regard to this particular goal and our mission. We're going to be focusing on expanding the role of self-governance in each of our districts. In other words, promoting and, and, and encouraging uh, engagement. Being engaged, uh, that could take the role of recruiting, educating, training, participating uh, in self-governance or local community governance activities. So um, this is what we're going to be promoting. And uh, <clears throat> we're still developing this concept. Uh, we got to figure out a way to how to measure this, among other things. But uh, uh, this is going to be a little, little change in emphasis, uh, and we're going to, going to be stressing more and more the concept of self-governance. Does anyone have any questions or comments on this to this point? Okay. All right. Well, then let's move on here, and I would like to introduce everyone. Rodney, you want to get your camera on? Well, let's see if I can get some lights on my wire. <laughs> there you go. All right. <clears throat> well, everyone, I want you to meet our past state regional director, uh, Rodney Huckleberry. And Rodney lives in Missouri, correct? Correct. Yep. So, Rodney, uh, give us a little background. How did you, when did you get started in Convention of States? Give us a little background. Yeah, so, uh, well, I'll just say I'm an Air Force veteran uh, that worked for Boeing. And I was in a, gar in a garage one day listening to Mark Levin, and I, at the time I didn't really get to listen to him much, and I was – Oh, yeah, about 30 minutes or so, and this was uh, in 2013, and I heard Senator David Long from Indiana being interviewed by Mark Levin on the radio show, and uh, the subject of Convention of States came up, and it caught my attention when they were talking about, you know, uh, bringing the government back to the people in Article 5 and, and all the stuff you hear today. It caught my attention, but I was a little bit concerned because messing with the Constitution for me is uh, uh, very risky. So I don't jump in on things when I just hear they're a good thing. So I did a uh, little bit of uh, investigation on it, and at that point I uh, signed up to be a volunteer. And at that time, I was like one of the first, I don't know, five, ten people in Convention of States uh, – at the time, one of the one or two in Missouri, and really that that was literally that was the scope of 
the people in the in the convention states at that time? I can't give you the exact numbers. It was right when they kicked it off. Uh, Diane Gomez had the email from me where I first sent an email to the national office at the time, uh-huh. and it was like within I don't know days or whatever of the kickoff of the convention of states. So oh, the number wow. in convention of states had been really really low. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. I, it might be kind of an exaggeration. It was five or ten, but I, it couldn't have been very many nationwide. Yeah. Um, so uh, then I started hearing about needing district captains and what district captains did, even though we really didn't know what they did at the time. <laughs> and so, yeah, we need leaders. So I signed up as a district captain, and, yeah, of course, right immediately uh, they, uh, they assigned me, and there we went from there. That yeah, was, that's yeah. my background. All right. How long did you serve as a district captain? Uh, well, I can't really say because I was like filling multiple roles in the state at the time, <laughs> uh, and for quite a while. Uh, right. I was grassroots coordinator. Uh, we had another guy that was really SIA, but he stepped back after a year or so. So I was kind of that. Uh, you could actually call me a co-state director. I was working with Keith Carmichael, state director here in Missouri, real close. Uh, so I basically filled all positions, and uh, me and the Keith Carmichael built up the state, made a few people there. And so as far as uh, and kind of legislative liaison, me and I, Keith Carmichael, well, I was working at Boeing, and I built up a lot of vacation days from there, not knowing this is what I was going to use it for. I was a facility manager there, and I, it, I had it running pretty good. So during the legislative session for like two years, I was able to spend, uh, of course, I could do a lot of things from the facility from the phone, but I spent like uh, about three days every week practically during the legislative session at the Capitol with the state director talking to legislators and trying to get it passed. It took us four mm-hmm. years. By that time, I was a regional director. Mm. So so m- moving to this position, I had written, it was uh, 2015, 2016. I had written an email to Jenny Rapini about an idea I had, and lo and behold, I got a call out of the blue from her and Mike Ruthenberg uh, telling me that what I had described is, is where they wanted to go and somehow I was right on the path of things they'd been talking about at the national level and mm-hmm. so they'd asked me if uh, I would consider taking this position. There was another guy in this position at the time and he was more of a technical guy and he, he wanted to get back to the technical stuff and, and not be the regional director so they were looking for somebody to take the position. And so that's how I fell into this. It was uh, September of, well, unofficially June 1st of 2016. September 1st of 2016 was full time. And I'm a volunteer like everybody else. I, my plan was to retire from Boeing and go full-time convention of states in Missouri. Mm. And when they asked me to do this, it was like no really re- any reason to change. So... I went full-time volunteer at Convention of States in this position as well. So <clears throat> tell us what you what your duties are now then. Yeah. So past states regional director, uh, initially it was keep the states going, uh, build the grassroots, just serve and support. And uh, we had eight states at the time, I think it was, and then we quickly passed up to 12. My position is serve and support the states, and that's really what it is. I'm a servant to everybody, and anybody's welcome to call me, email me, or whatever at any time. Slack me. I'm on your Slack, Slack team as well. So it's basically I, I, I share information that comes from the national team. We have a weekly meeting. And so I kind of give you updates on what's going to happen, what's been happening, things like that. But 
it's pretty complex as a grassroots organization with all the people in the states and, and in all the states. There are always questions and needs and advice that comes up, even some HR things from time to time. That, uh, and I'm not an HR person, but I'm learning to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I know you've helped me on some things. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, I spend all my day on phone calls, really. And initially, it wasn't quite that way. It was more status checking of the follow-up tool then, and the LAPD, which is now the leader management tool. Make sure those things, were, the people were getting taken care of as they were coming in and as they were applying. And then the activities that other people in the national staff wanted the states to do, and we'd do that. Yeah. And I'm trying to evolve that more, too, uh, and have been for a while into more of all, all the service and support that everybody needs. But... And take it in a different direction of what uh, Dale was talking about there with the self-governance. Because in my mind, in my past, even since I was a kid, uh, born and raised in the People's Republic of Illinois, uh, I've always, <laughs> yeah, I've always had this uh, thing about the politics and bad things in government. And so uh, we're trying to. People need something to achieve, something to make a change for in order to grow the grassroots. And I've known that for a long time, and I've tried to kick this off for a while. And so Indiana has picked it up, and thankfully so, to where we're going to make a model of Indiana of how to grow the grassroots as uh, active people in the state. To be active, you have to be engaged and active in self-governance, and it's a pretty broad term when it comes down to it. Cool. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have a question for Rodney? We take a little bit more time here. we got a lot more to cover here, but uh, anyone have any uh, a question for Rodney or anything? Speak up now. <laughs> All right. He looks like a grumpy old man with hair. <laughs> Did I hear somebody? No, I don't think so. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, Rodney, thank you very much. Appreciate you. No problem. Appreciate everybody too. That's one thing I got to say is the everything Indiana is doing. Let me just add this real quick. The regional directors have a meeting with Jenny Rapini, Mike Rosenberg, and Rita Dunaway two times a week on Tuesday morning and Friday morning. And we go through uh, stats that you guys don't see, but it's the things you're doing uh, every day with Convention of States, like welcoming the new people in the follow-up tool and looking at the applicants and, and all that stuff, as well as everything else, events and things like that. And so... And with Indiana, you guys do such a great job that the numbers are always low and all those things. And I tell them about your education program that you got going on, the five, maybe uh -huh. going to six. And uh, all, the, all the great things you guys got, got going on. So that they're very well aware of what's going on in Indiana. You're like a model for the country right now. All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get let's move on into uh, grassroots. Uh, uh, George is uh, can't be with us tonight. He's uh, uh, actually uh, conducting some training tonight, so uh, uh, George won't be uh, making any uh, input with us tonight. But uh, what I want to get into here is, uh, if you recall, uh, in a past state call, we talked about the concept of the funnel and um, the funnel, if you, if you experienced, uh, if you were a salesperson in the uh, work world at any time, you ran into this concept. And the funnel basically is where, as far as Convention of States is concerned, where all the supporters and petition signers come into the funnel, and then we work 
the the people through the funnel. We interview them. We uh, those that are volunteering. Uh, we uh, train them. We appoint them. And out comes at the bottom of the funnel will come uh, a new leader for our our state. Well, <clears throat> we need to refocus on this funnel. Our funnel is, is has dried up to a certain extent. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is we need to continue calling and contacting volunteers in our state uh, that we didn't get to back in January and, or excuse me, back in February and March when we um, did this uh, at that point in time. So we've got over 800 um, volunteers that have yet to be contacted to see if they're interested in stepping forward uh, becoming a leader, preferably a district captain, or any other position. So uh, <clears throat> this is something that's ongoing. We have a district captain recruitment team uh, formed to do these calls. We've got a tracking tool set up and guidelines. So our job now is to uh, continue to fill this funnel and to work the people in this funnel uh, to bring on new leaders. So if you happen, if you're interested in participating in this uh, district captain recruitment team, please let me know. Uh, we can always use the additional help. Okay. All right. Let's then, let's go to uh, new leaders that have come on board in the month of May. We've had, a, actually had a very good month. Um, <clears throat> New leaders that have, have just literally just uh, joined us. Uh, one of the individuals actually uh, came on board today. So uh, we've got um, Diane Hurt in, in uh, District 25. She's going to be a co-leader, co-district captain. Uh, for, And we're going to talk about that a bit here in a little bit, co-leader, co-leadership. Um, but then we have Joseph Kristen in, in District 50, Mark Botts in 70, Bill Papik in 84, John Stuvey in 100, <clears throat> Jerry Callahan in District 90. And we have a new uh, person that has come on board as an SIA, State Information Analyst. Uh, uh, this gentleman uh, works for a software development company there in, uh, in Indianapolis. And, uh, uh, he appears, he looks like he's going to be a very, very good candidate for uh, the SIA position. So um, those are our brand new leaders that are just coming in. Um, now, we also try to recognize people that have completed the first two modules of the training. And we have two existing district captains that have completed module one, one and two, Ed Paragai and Bob Glasscock. Ed, are you on tonight? I don't see you on the list. Okay, Bob, I don't see you on either. So, <clears throat> so uh, those are two existing district captains. We, we've uh, requested that all existing district captains and region captains go through the training. So uh, there are two that are going through. Uh, but we have two other new district captains that have completed the training, and that's uh, Larry Kehoe in District 39 and Thomas Schultz in District 56. Now, Larry, I know you were on here at one time. Are you still on now? I'm here. I switched the phone. Uh, my Internet kept uh, giving uh, echoes. Okay. Have you got camera capability? Uh, no, not because I'm on phone. I'm not on the Internet. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry. That's okay. <clears throat> well, Larry, you want to, uh, anything, would you like to say or introduce yourself uh, to everyone? Uh, sure. Uh, I live in uh, Carmel, Indiana. Okay. Uh, I've uh, been district captain now for, I guess, two or three weeks and uh, got interested in uh, Convention of States. Uh, on Twitter, I think I saw uh, Senator Coburn talking about it, and uh, okay. went to the website, read about it, and liked what I saw. So I uh, 
sign the petition, and then you guys contacted me a couple months ago. All right, all right. Well, good, good job, Larry. Keep uh, you're doing a great job. Thomas, are you on now? Thanks. Yes, I, I am. Okay, you got camera, Thomas. There you are. <laughs> all right, Thomas. Uh, you just completed the training program. I know I've uh, seen some uh, Slack messages from you. You're uh, calling volunteers. and oh, yes. uh, <laughs> How's that going? I, well, out of the volunteers I, uh, that you guys have earmarked for me, I got one and a half. <laughs> okay. one, one, one I got a hold of and... He was one of the ones that you guys had trouble getting a hold of, but he's a he travels for business. Uh huh. And he won't be back in town for at least two weeks. Okay. The other one, he's a traveling salesman, and no. he just doesn't have the time to do anything. So mm -hmm. I hit them both up for one thing. In your personal day, when you go out and talk to people. Suggest the Convention of States suggest Article Five to solve problems of the United States, and they said, "Hey, we do that." Good, good, good suggestion, man. That's good. You'd be surprised when you when you just mention that to someone. You'd be surprised uh, what kind of conversation that can 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 uh, uh, can come from that. So, uh, good job. Where, where do you live, Thomas? Richmond. Richmond, okay. Okay. I used to be a, a Buckeye, but I moved th about 30 years ago to Richmond, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I also had this, uh, try to get into the uh, county fair, but uh, I found out yesterday that that's not going to happen. Oh, okay. Because they want three weeks before the fair their money up front, which, oh. would, which would make it about, I think it's around next week or the week after that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, maybe next time. Next time. They want it about, maybe about April the 1st of the year, like next year. Maybe oh, really? Their contract is so convoluted, I don't know who drawed it up. But. Okay. <laughs> All right, Thomas, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, man. Keep up the good work. Okay, uh, I also wanted to recognize um, uh, some existing district captains and a region captain that uh, have completed the training program. And... Uh, that's uh, Terry King, this DC in uh, District 49, Tim Heidenreich, District Captain in 86, Gary Harbaugh, Region Captain in 3, Region 3. Terry, I saw you on. Where Are you still on? Terry? Can't hear you, Terry. Are you still are you on there? Okay, must be having a problem here. Okay, uh, I know Tim's not with us tonight. He told me he wouldn't be with us. Gary, are you there? I am here. You are here. You got the camera? Uh, there he is. <laughs> uh, I, uh, because I'm a lazy person, I'm trying real hard to recruit lots of district captains. Good. So that we can spread the work around. All right, great, great. Now, Gary, you, uh, uh, I know you started as a district captain, right? Yes. Actually, we had you uh, covering two districts, if I recall. That's correct. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, going through the, uh, the training program. I uh, appreciate all the existing district captains as well as Gary that went through the training program. So thanks for doing that. Okay. I'm getting an echo from somebody here. Please uh, hear and mute yourself. 
Okay. All right. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, I just wanted to remind everybody also that we still have positions open uh, in our state. We have still looking for a coalitions director, a veterans coalition coordinator, uh, videographers, a media liaison, and of course, region captains. So keep that in mind uh, that uh, we still have those positions open. So if you run across anyone that maybe has a background in any of this or any interest, please um, let us know, okay? All right. Training program. Rachel, I know I saw you on. Are you still? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, there you are. Um, okay, so um, I'm not really sure what to say. Um, the training program, I've just been working on it. It's, everything's updated as of now. Um, you've already gone through the people who have finished, which is good. Um, we're still we're experiencing a little bit of a growing pains as far as the modules that um, the third and fourth module that I have Paul and um, George working on, but I think we're getting through that. Um, otherwise, yeah, the big news is that um, kind of going back to the point that Gary um, is saying that he wants to be lazy, um, just to let everybody know that the next step in the training program is going to be to um, start transferring the responsibility for training to the region captains. We haven't done that yet, but that's kind of where we're going with it, um, not only because I'm losing my mind, but because it's part of their responsibility and it's important for them to have to develop relationships with their district captains. So um, Gary's going to be the guinea pig for that. We've already started talking to him about it, so I think he's prepared. Um, and then, again, kind of in in... Uh, in this slide that you have on here, Module 6, yeah, that's something we've talked about as well. Um, since we are looking for new region captains and we may potentially have one that might be interested in becoming a region captain, we're gonna, um, I'm going to create a additional module for region captains, probably in cooperation with Gary, since he's the one that has experience, um, so that we can kind of formalize how we would train a region captain, because the region captain's responsibilities are different than district captain. Um, so that's in process. And um, additionally, we've also implemented a policy where um, usually if somebody or if there's a district that already has a district captain and they find another person in their district who's interested potentially in being a district captain, um, the policy that we have in place now is that the current existing district captain is really the one that gets to make the decision about whether they want to bring that person on as a co-leader, a true co-leader, or just a DC team member. And I think that's the right way to go as far as the district captain knows their own time limits, the, the, you know, the work, and whether they want that kind of help. So if we bring people in as a team member, just somebody who helps, and again, it's up to the district captain to decide that, um, they can just be, the district captain selects them, they don't have to go through the formal interview process, and they don't have to go to the training program. If, they, if the district captain, existing district captain, wants to bring someone as an actual equal co-leader, co-district captain, that person's going to have to go through the same training program that um, the original district captain went through and also the same interview process, which is um, they need to do uh, their first interview either with George or their region captain and then be approved by Dale. So I see that you have that on there. Yeah, that was going to be my next slide. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> So, okay. yep, um, that's all right. also just to let you guys know, because I think it's kind of cool for our state. Um, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was a week ago, sorry, my camera keeps sliding down, I'm on my iPad. Um, uh, Dale and I were actually on a phone call. And we lost you. We lost you. We're lo we lost your volume or your audio. Am I back? Yeah, now you're back. Yeah, so we were, um, Rodney kindly invited Dale and me on, well, I, Dale would have been on there anyway, to um, a state director call with some of the other past states to present our training program to um, some of the past states to help them get started. Uh, so um, we've made our program available to 
the directors in other states, and I, I think we got a pretty good reception. So kind of going back to Rodney's point about Indiana leading, we really are in a bunch of different areas. I know Paul has done the same thing where he's done presentations for national, I think, with his 34 Ready program. So um, I just wanted to give all of us, you know, a collective shout out for being kind of ahead of the game with everything. All right. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's then... <coughs> Let me go over this region breakdown uh, report that we normally uh, uh, that we normally show in every call. Uh, this shows us uh, uh, all the district uh, districts that we have with district captains. I've just made them all red. So we're now at uh, 23 districts. That leaves us uh, 70, 77 to fill. Um, we are here at the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> I'm indicating again here, in order to reach the 70% mark, uh, these are the number of district captains that would have to be filled in each region. The red line here indicates the number that remains to be filled to attain the 70% mark. And you'll notice here that uh, uh, some of the regions need to fill all that they need to, to hit the 70 percent but in a couple of regions we're making progress and here in uh, in uh, region 5 for example uh, we only need one more uh, district captain to fill that uh, uh, 70 percent mark so um, uh, we still have a ways to go obviously region captains of course uh, Gary is our only region captain so we're looking for region captains in all the uh, regions. Support positions, uh, we have six of the ten filled, so we're still looking for four more uh, region, uh, region captains. Okay. Uh, grassroots growth, this report that we normally look at, uh, <clears throat> this is petition signers, okay? Now, some interesting, an interesting phenomenon is happening here. Um, here in this column, uh, this is, these are the number of petition signers in each region for the month of May. Uh, and of course, Region 4 and Region 8 led the way for the month of May. But we only had a total of 657 petition signers in the month of May. Now, in February, I can't recall the exact number. It was something close to, I think, 1,300 was the number of petition signers we had. Now, that was the uh, that was the month that the Sean Hannity Show promotion kicked off, and we got a big influx that month. Well, that number has slowly gone down every month since, and in the month of May, it dropped down quite a bit. So we only... Uh, got we only brought in 657 petition signers in the month of May, so uh, we need to uh, make the best make the best use out of those uh, people that are coming in to uh, convention of states and the volunteers. So once again, that's why we're trying to recruit uh, and and uh, recruit district captains. Okay. Uh, Second column is the, the year-to-date growth. The number of then third column petition number of petitions remaining. Uh, we needed to get 15,000 more petition signers. We have 6,489 to go in order to achieve our 30,000 goal. Over here we have the outstanding districts for each region, and of course then the district district 42 was the uh, outstanding or uh, the high uh, uh, petition signer uh, district for the month of May. Anyone have any any questions on on this report or the um, district region breakdown report? Anybody have any any questions on anything? All right, let's move on to legislative. Paul, are you there? 
Yes, sir, I'm here. My video is starting up. There it is. There you go. Okay, do I, fi do I finally have this uh, correctly? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we agreed to. Yeah, each, each district captain meet at least once with each legislator presenting the 34 ready strategy. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's what we'd like is, is uh, for the district captains once they finish the training to actually put it to use and meet with their representative and senator uh, before the end of the year. You know, ideally we'll meet with a lot of the legislators then before uh, the 2019 session starts. And, um, you know, I've already presented this to our Senate sponsor, uh, Travis Holdman, and um, he was impressed with it. And we, we had just some initial brainstorming about um, perhaps once uh, the uh, session starts that, that we hold a special meeting of legislators who are interested to talk through some of those issues of getting our um, commissioner selection updated. Uh, and improved and talk about some uh, proposed amendments that we may want our uh, commissioners to carry forward. Um, <clears throat> along the lines of uh, commissioner selection, you may have seen, uh, seen it on Slack. Uh, Louisiana just passed uh, their commissioner selection bill and uh, I thought they did a very nice job. They've got five, um, five commissioners with three alternates. <coughs> So, you know, our, our bill says two commissioners and two alternates. So, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about tiebreakers or, you know, what if you do, what if one commissioner says yes, one says no. And uh, they require that two of the five uh, not be office holders. So they just be regular citizens. Three of them can be um, hold uh, senator representative positions in the state legislature. And uh, one of the three alternates has to be an ordinary citizen as well. So they've, they've got a very good bill and, and something maybe we can use uh, to steal some good ideas from if we can update ours. Okay, all right. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk then, Paul, about the uh, State Legislator yeah, Award. Yeah. So uh, we're preparing <coughs> nominations for uh, Travis Holdman and, and Ben Smaltz for some of the Legislator Awards that our national organization is looking for. And I think Ken is on here, so I can publicly thank him for doing a great job of uh, working with some video to get clips of um, Ben's uh, floor speech uh, back from uh, February 29th, 2016, when, when we passed. And uh, that, that will be, be part of the submission. And then for uh, Senator Holdman, we've got some great footage that Kim put together uh, when he was at our event in um, in uh, just north in Carmel last uh, last fall. So I, I think we've got some really good video of them, and uh, I'm working uh, to get the the uh, the verbiage put together for the nominations, and we'll get those in by the deadline by the 31st. So. Now this was uh, uh, Paul. Am I correct? This was this um, award program. Was it just announced in the month of May? Do you recall? I, yeah, I think maybe the very beginning of May. Could have been okay. the end of April, but um, it, it's been out there about a month. So, do you know? Uh, is it possible to have more than one legislator? And it's recognized in a particular state, so is it possible that both of them could be, or will it just be one? Do you I know? Think it is because there are, I forget the number, four or five, maybe it's five different um, <clears throat> awards. Uh, There's five of them. There's there five of them. Three, four, five, yeah. So, you know, we've, we're going to um, submit Travis for the. George Washington Award for Unwavering Courage, and uh, Ben for the Colonel George Mason Award for Preemption of Federal Tyranny. Those are some, sounds like it's going to be a pretty neat sounding award if they win it. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know if there's a limit on how many legislators per state can be awarded, or if it's limited to just one, we're going to do five awards, one of each, or, uh, and maybe Rodney knows the answer to these, so I'll stop talking because I see his picture here. <laughs> this, this might be wiser than myself. 
<laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah. Dale was asking me about the, the posting of it where the form was the other day, and it, uh, I saw it posted uh, April 20th. So it was about middle of April when they initiated it. Uh, the deadline was May 31st. There is. Uh, and uh, Paul was the first one to ask about the number of nominations for individual legislators and I think how many could be nominated. So the ant I pose that question to national and a legislator can be nominated by multiple people in the state. Uh, I don't know that they would accept multiple nominations for the same legislator by the same person. They <laughs> probably weed those out. I don't know how you'd reword them to make it good. But yeah, so legislators can be more nominated multiple times by people in the state, and you could put the same legislator down for every award on the form if you wanted to. So, so we need. Okay. Oh, I need, I need to talk to you some more about this then. Um, I, I wasn't quite clear on this. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, our, so we're going to submit these. Is this the first time they've done these awards? Do you, do you know, Rodney, is this the first yes, time? Yes. It is? Okay. Well, I think that's very, very We're planning on making an, an annual award ceremony, though. Yeah. Um, so if our legislators uh, win, uh, we certainly want to get some pictures of uh, uh, presenting that award to them. Um, anyway, okay, yeah. good. The, the other key to that is, is nationwide there will only be one legislator selected for each of those awards, and there will be a ceremony sometime around September time frame, I think, August, September, at some location in the United States. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, All right. I mean, with that information, can you can you find out how many have been nominated for each award? Pardon me. Can you find out how many have been nominated for each of the awards? Yeah. I'll or try is to that find cheating? Out. If I find out, you know, there have only been like two nominated for Abraham Lincoln awards, so I put one of our guys in for that. Yeah, I'll try to find that out. Okay. And we'll be strategic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, anything else, Paul? Uh, I think that's all I've got. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. All right, Ken, are you there? Our comms team. Did I see Ken on the list here? I thought I did. Yeah, Ken. Ken Kashuba. Are you there? He's probably trying to get on. Can't get on. <clears throat> I see his camera, but I can't hear him. You see his camera? I do, yeah. Says Ken. Yeah, is that him there? <laughs> All right. Well, Ken, we can't hear you. No, that's not Ken. I think that's someone else. All right. Well, maybe Ken will be joining us. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, Ken, uh, our comms team, uh, their major uh, project right now is to uh, create this um, page that will be on the national website, conventionofstates.com. And, and uh, Ken, are you coming in? Can you hear me? Okay, there you go. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I was here all I was here all along. I don't know what happened with the volume. It just wasn't there. Oh, all right. All right, Ken. Well, uh, start. Tell us what's going on with the comms team then. Well, as you started to say, our right. uh, our our mission is to continue to uh, uh, grow our our grow and get our our state page produced so that we can add that to our uh, Facebook and our Citizens Builder page, or our Citizens Builder website. Um, and as we've talked about that in the past, the goal for the, um, for the state page is basically going to be a, um, uh, a place that we can 
uh, not only uh, share things amongst uh, the existing leaders and people that are part of COS, but it's really more or less a, a place for our district captains and, and our other leaders and, and uh, volunteers in the state to reach out and, and uh, become familiar with people that might be looking to uh, maybe just heard about us or investigating us uh, either through uh, the Facebook page or however they came about. But the state page is going to be something that we want to kind of use to uh, bring people together from all, all over the districts. Um, and, and recognize certain events that are going on in each one of those districts so that people, in, wherever they are, can uh, reach out, meet their district captain and other people that are involved in COS and uh, continue to grow the grassroots in a uh, more personal way and in a way that uh, uh, makes them feel more like family and want to join us. So that's probably the main, the main goal going forward. Uh, along with a few other uh, major goals like uh, finding some more videographers, um, putting out a few more uh, training videos for people that um, that want to go ahead and use their smartphones or other types of uh, paraphernalia to go ahead and, and, and uh, keep everybody up to date with things that are going on in their own local towns. Okay. Well, I want to show you all an example of what Ken can do. <laughs> Um, we recently uh, attended uh, some Lincoln Day dinners here in uh, Allen County where I live and DeKalb County uh, where Paul lives and uh, Paul, myself and Gary Harbaugh who lives here in uh, Allen County uh, we all attended Lincoln Day dinners in, in both DeKalb County and Allen County and we just simply took some pictures and uh, off my smartphone and did a video off my smartphone and I sent it all to Ken and this is what he put together uh, and I and the reason I want to show this is to give you an example of what we need you to do we need you out in the field as district captains or whatever capacity you're in take pictures of, of, of things that are going on uh, create uh, takes get some video and send it to Ken and let him do his thing with it here's what Ken put together for to cover the Lincoln Day dinners that uh, Paul Gary and I uh, attended and I hope this works it worked earlier should be getting a red button here to click on there we go Oh, there's some handsome guys, I'll tell you. The Allen County dinner they conducted a debate between the three senatorial candidates. Ken and let him put something together like this. I just thought uh, 
He did a great job on this. This will probably this will be content that will get onto our page uh, that will be on uh, conventionestates.com someday. So uh, thanks again, Ken. Very good. Oh, no, good job. No problem. And with that, with that, uh, Dale, I, you know, it, these these events are great for that, and and it does they don't have to be. I mean, we we can do a lot with just still pictures, but uh, you know, uh, it doesn't. A couple of short clips work really fine. But uh, this is the kind of stuff too that that I, I could see going forward on our state page. Uh, you know, people meeting just regular people at the coffee shop um, or at, or at a barbecue. That's our. That's Rachel and I uh, talked about. One of the things we really want to do is to organize some events going forward. Uh, in, in everybody's local districts where we can put this together and uh, you know I think it's great to be able to put to, uh, put together a backyard barbecue with you know just talking to people and and uh, you cool. know people see people see that it's just you know everyday people you know building this grassroots and I and I can see that kind of stuff going forward so appreciate yeah, that, you guys putting that through, getting that stuff through to me and and uh, that's a lot for me it's lots of fun so all right thanks Ken thank you Okay, one other topic I want to cover. I uh, put this out on the uh, general uh, channel for our uh, Indiana Slack team, and that has to do with uh, events coming up this summer, uh, county fairs or, or other events of that nature. Um, if there is a, an event fee that you need to pay in order to uh, have a an information table there, then uh, Convention of States will pay that fee, but you got to fill out a particular form. You uh, that form has to be submitted by me, and it has to be submitted three weeks prior to the due date. So uh, you can't wait until the last minute to do this. Um, this table here is a table I set up last year at a car show that I attended um, and we have uh, two banners like you see pictured here I have one and Ken has the other one and Ken lives I live in Fort Wayne Ken lives in the uh, Indianapolis area so uh, we'll get a banner to you if uh, again you need to leave give us some head head uh, headway on uh, there, I also have some uh, stands here to set the table on because you need to get it up to a certain height. Um, need to uh, get some printed materials. I have some of these. Um, the little yellow thing behind the table is not part of the display, <laughs> so that's not part. Not that's not part of it. But uh, so we have these materials if you want to utilize them for an information table type. Thing at, at a particular event so uh, let me know if you got anything going on like that all right anybody have any questions on anything that we've covered so far before I close this out anybody have any questions or comments okay all right uh, Dale real quick did you mention the handouts that you can get for events and those need to be like three weeks ahead of time as well uh, well I didn't mention that but yes we can order we can order uh, printed materials for you uh, once again like Rodney said we need uh, at least uh, at least three weeks ahead of time in order to get those delivered to you okay um, let me close out. I found a, 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 a we talked about self governance, and uh, you remember Jean Kirkpatrick? Uh, she was part of the Reagan administration. I always admired her. I found this quote that she had uh, uh, provided. I think that it's always appropriate for Americans and for American foreign policy to make clear why we feel that self government is most compatible with peace the well-being of people and human dignity so I thought that was uh, an appropriate quote for our conversation on self-governance so uh, 
with that, I'm going to close it out unless anyone's got anything they want to want to say. I'll give you one more chance if you want to comment on anything or ask a question. Okay. All right. Well, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, it's slow. It's, uh, it's uh, going to be a long battle. But we're going the right way, and I'm really, really pleased and excited uh, with all the new people, the new leaders that we have coming in, and uh, we just need to keep up the good work and keep keep plowing ahead. Uh, and like Rodney said, we're we're I think leading the way as uh, 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 in the uh, country with convention of states. So that that's good. And uh, I want to thank you all for what you're doing. Keep up the good work. So everybody, have a good evening. Good night. Good night.